Welcome back. Off the Record starts right now. On this correspondence edition of Off the Record, we have Kathy Barks Hoffman and Bill Ballinger, along with Rick Pluta and Kyle Malian. Here's the rundown. Mr. Romney back in Michigan. Ballot proposals galore. And the V-word flap continues. And how about a white mayor in Detroit? All this and more coming up right now. Off the Record. Getting the inside out, it's Off the Record with senior Capitol correspondent Tim Skubik and his Capitol Press Corps colleagues. Production of Off the Record is made possible in part by a grant from Truscott Rossman, Michigan's only bipartisan strategic communications firm, serving statewide, national, and international clients from their offices in Lansing, Detroit, and Grand Rapids. TruscottRossman.com By the Michigan Food and Beverage Association, in conjunction with the Michigan Business and Professional Association, working together for its members. Membership information on the web at mishbusiness.org. By Hager Fox Heating and Air Conditioning Company, providing comfort to mid-Michigan homes and businesses since 1941. Hager Fox and Bryant, for whatever it takes. On the web at hagerfox.com. And by Campaign Finance US LLC, a Michigan company bringing the public online access to local campaign finance reporting. Find your county's filings at campaignfinance.us. Campaign Finance U.S., creating tools for transparency for Michigan's counties. And now this edition of Off the Record with Tim Skubik. Thanks, Joe Donovan. Welcome to this week's edition of Off the Record. Well, Mitt Romney was back in the state, in town, and how did he do? Well, you know, I think that he, he had a crowd of several hundred people in DeWitt. He made stops in Frankenmuth, had a small business roundtable there, had a stop in Holland State Park. And, um, Don't forget the moneymaker in Troy. Well, yeah, those were the next day he had, and yeah, he, and, yes, he had fundraisers, two fundraisers. So, um, you know, the polls are showing that this is tightening. Uh, this still seems to me to be a state where Obama has the whole issue about saving the auto and having the a federal bailout for the auto industry is a big plus in his favor. Uh, but this is also a state where Mitt Romney grew up, so we'll see. Uh, in full disclosure, I was on assignment in outstate Michigan and missed the visit. Uh, how did he do? Um, I was at the DeWitt stop and I, I, I listened to all the speeches and, and the crowds were enthusiastic. Uh, the thing that, that struck me was there's kind of a, a, a subtle shift in the messaging that in his visit last month uh, to uh, Lansing, that um, there, there was almost this tension between what Governor Snyder said about Michigan being the comeback state and what Mitt Romney said about people here struggling and suffering. And now, and, and, and we're seeing this in other states where the, Mitt Romney seems to be competitive and there are Republican governors, that, that they're, they're, they're melding their message a little bit well, more. Mr. Snyder didn't change his colors. Now, what Mitt Romney is saying, you know, things are starting to look better here in Michigan, and I'm going to take what Governor Rick Snyder has done here to Washington and do the same Which there. is what Mr. Snyder has been saying all along. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you called him one tough uh, geek. <laughs> good try. <laughs> he gave it a good try, though, didn't Apparently he? Too? He's not a resident of Michigan. <laughs> you know what I, what I really kind of took away from the stops, and I also didn't attend any of the three, but I really think that this is about testing the market just to see if Michigan is going to be a state that down the road in September, October when things really matter if this is a state that he's going to go for you know when you look at the numbers and what he's got to do to win you know Florida is a must Ohio is a must Virginia Indiana states that he lost or the Republicans lost in 08 Michigan is kind of in this bubble of like eight states that are possibilities but not sure well, we're, fire well we are we're second tier is right now the, the main focus of the campaign is to nail down Florida Ohio states so why like was that. he here he yeah. was here because they've got to maintain the presence they've got to keep keep uh, the Democrats and, and President Obama working here, but also seeing, like Kyle said, if, if these visits move the needle so that once they've nailed down their, their first tier of states, that they can start Look focusing it. on the ones that they have to turn I that read, Barack Obama won I last time. I got an advanced copy of the stump speech. Uh, it, to, to borrow Fritz Mondale's old line, where's the beef? There was nothing new policy-wise. It was a retread of cut taxes, reduce government spending, uh, get rid of regulation. What, what was the what was the sound bite out of that out of the visit? There wasn't one. Yeah, it was pretty much pablum, and it has been for some time. And I think it still will be going into the fall. Look, getting back to what Kyle and Rick said, 
he's just got to, this is Mitt Romney, uh, compete in Michigan the way George W. Bush did in 2004 against John Kerry and make Kerry sweat and think, I could lose Michigan. A Democratic nominee cannot afford to lose Michigan. And you remember, Kerry came into Michigan on the Sunday before the election to make sure he won it. And he barely did win it by three points. A lot of people said if he just spent that time in Ohio, it might have been President Kerry. Contrast that with John McCain, who announced a month before the election, <laughs> 2008, I'm out of here, I can't win Michigan, and he took the whole Republican <laughs> ticket down with him. Exactly. So the last thing that Mitt Romney can do is repeat John McCain's approach in 2008. He's got to run this like 2004 and make Obama sweat all the way to the end, even if Romney himself cannot win the state. Well, they the say Romney the campaign Republicans say that they're going after the so-called Reagan Democrats. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to help them much. I mean, you know, that's Macomb. You know, I think probably uh, Obama won Oakland County last time. That's more, much more of a toss-up this time. But you know, Macomb, we'll see. I mean, a lot of that is those are still a lot of auto workers. And Romney said not one word about the auto industry this time He's around. He's been told not to. Right, well, <laughs> it's not, he, he doesn't have a winning argument for that in this state, no matter how he finesses it. He's come in a couple of times and tried to finesse it. It doesn't seem to help him. Mm -hmm. So this time he's not talking about it at all. But mm -hmm. I do think, you know, it wasn't just Michigan. This was a six state tour. I think he is trying out his message in these smaller markets. It was kind of a practice run. You know, what do people like? What do people not like? Um, and it was a chance to kind of, once again, make him seem more personable. He went in and, you know, was at least rolling out pie crust at the Sweet Delicious, you know, bakery <laughs> cabinet. Which I'm sure he does and, at home. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. No, but I'll tell you, Anne so, Romney can roll a pie crust. Well, it, it, she, never mind, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I, this was sort of a practice run in a lot of these states, not just Michigan. Um, and, you know, I think Bill's absolutely right. They, they're not positive that they're going to win here. What That is a, a way to keep Obama tied up in the state. They, but Republicans feel like they almost can't lose here, that if they win the state, then it's game over. But if they keep Obama and the Democrats working here, spending time here, and spending money here, that might otherwise be but spent you know on another battleground. But I don't think the Obama campaign is all that worried yet because they are running national, you know, they're running all these political uh, television ads, and they have not been running them in Michigan no, to this point. No, they have not, but they so should be worried. Look at, if you look at the polling data, independent voters that Obama got last time in a runaway with John McCain, Romney is winning well, with independent women, independent men, and the group of independent voters by a wide Margin. Well, let's wait until Obama actually comes here and starts campaigning and getting their message. I mean, Romney was on our front pages in January, February, almost all of February. That's all you heard. Uh, once he starts getting his bus tour out and getting on the train or whatever he's going to do and actually starts competing here, running his TV ads, I think the numbers are going to change but, quite but, dramatically. But Tim, but Tim is on to something. I, I know it hurts to say that. but <laughs> You want to retract it? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that some Democrats um, you know, look at what happened in Wisconsin where the unions focused on organization and get out of the vote in the face of a barrage of television advertising and, and look what happened. They don't want to see the same thing happen in Michigan. Well, and the auto issue is not resonating with the independent votes either. You know, he's coming in, I saved the auto. A lot of people don't care. It's not an issue that I think he will ride to a Michigan victory on. Well, let's right see what happens once, once huh? the visit starts. Well, I, I disagree. I think you it's, disagree? I think I disagree. it's helping Obama marginally right now, particularly since Romney has not come up with a coherent rebuttal to the charges against him for wanting to throw the industry under the bus. He's got to come up with a better answer. If he can do that, if he can put it to rest, I think Romney still potentially could win the state. Um, I, I guess anything's possible, you know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't sound enthusiastic. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I don't. I, and I guess the reason is I'm, I'm just waiting for the race to start here in Michigan. I mean, this is all just getting <laughs> Romney's name out there. I mean, to be honest, I mean, we, we haven't seen Obama. Not just here. get his name out there. Well, you know, the Holland visit is also kind of significant because remember, in the primary, that was Santorum country that he's going to have to make some visits to West Michigan just to make sure that, that that crowd remains enthusiastic about the ticket and wants to get out on Election Day. I think that's actually his bigger issue is, you know, I don't think, I think there's a lot of conservative Republicans in this state who were heartily, heartily behind Santorum and they're still not big Romney supporters. It doesn't matter that he's from here. Well, uh, but what they're counting so, on is, but, but, but they're big Obama adversaries. Well, they absolutely are. But, you know, once again, it's a matter for the Republicans who turns out, you know, and are people 
people going to be enthusiastic? And I think that, you know, polls show that there's still an enthusiasm gap for some of the And I think that gets to the messaging, is, is that Romney is trying to give them something to vote for, not That's just something to vote That's the key point. I hate to against. agree with Pluto. This is, oh this my is goodness. turning this into is a love fest here. <laughs> you, you, know, you want to change, uh, trade seats <laughs> with me here, Rick? Uh, maybe you ought to train, change ties. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did fit this I in. I did get it. Good job. Okay. Good job. He has to be very careful. Voters don't want to hear why the other guy is bad. They want to hear why you're good. What are you going to do for me? That's a problem for both candidates mm -hmm. right now. I mean, More for Mr. Romney. Well, maybe yes? not. Because, look, you've got a president in there. Who doesn't want to run on his record. He doesn't want to run on his record. And there are a lot of doubts about him, a lot of doubts about whether we want four more years. And is he going to just spend uh, all his time between now and November trashing his opposition? He should not. No, and so neither one should. The, the American electorate, you're right, Michigan electorate, they want a positive vision. What concretely are we going to do going forward? The vision thing. The yeah. vision <laughs> thing. <laughs> the vision 41. Thing. That's right. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, the V word. We're now into day eight of this story. Has it um, died on the vine or not, Mr. Pluto? Uh, well, no, I, a couple things. First of all, the, you know, just, just the barrage of By the of way, emails. if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, look it up on the internet. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even want to mention the word today? I, I said the V away. word. That, that I'll say it. That, oh. that, that, uh, uh, a, a few days ago, <laughs> you're trying to say it. Hard. A few days ago, two state lawmakers were say sanctioned. <laughs> two days ago, a, 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 a few days ago, two uh, Democratic female state lawmakers were sanctioned with a day of being silenced on the House floor uh, for their behavior during a pretty heated anti-abortion debate. One of them said the phrase, I'm, "I'm flattered you're so interested in my vagina, but no means no," and that's what all of this this kerfuffle is about. And for some reason. Republicans, House Republicans, can't stop talking about it. Uh, this week, State Representative Wayne Schmidt went on statewide radio and said that these two women were just given a timeout for misbehavior, which just got the whole thing rolling again. But the word has gone out, put duct tape on your mouth and shut up yeah. to the Republicans. Not soon enough. Yeah. Well, I, I spoke yesterday to Maxine Berman, who's a former state lawmaker, wrote the book, The Only Boobs in the House Are Men, and now is uh, <laughs> the Griffin Chair up at, uh, up mm. at Central Michigan. And she says that there's no way the Republicans can message their way out of this. Yes, they that, can. Well, they've tried. No, 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 they, no, they can. I'm sorry. We were wrong. Um, mm. That's probably not going to happen, despite the fact that I think, think there's an online petition that 45,000 people have signed asking Jace Bolger and, uh, you know, to apologize. Well, one of the lawmakers, uh, Lisa Brown, is a uh, candidate uh, for uh, uh, Oakland County clerk against a Republican. Now she wishes she was running for the U.S. Senate. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. No kidding. But, uh, 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 you know, one Republican remarked that, um, that, that, that the State House Republicans have made Lisa Brown the most well-funded countywide candidate in the country. But now they come at the 11th hour explaining this was not new. You said on the show this was unprecedented. The Republicans say lots of people have been censored and told not to talk, but does that change the dialogue? So uh, what? It does not change the dialogue, but the key thing is nobody has really had this done in this way for this specific reason. This it is unprecedented. Well, that's what the Republicans claim. They say that the Democrats as recently as two years ago silenced Republicans Sub Rosa. Including Jace Bolger. Yeah, and they did it behind the scenes. They never announced it, never told the public. Well, let me tell you something. They wouldn't have told the public now either. What happened was that once Stamas told uh, the, uh, the, the, the Democratic floor leader, floor leader uh, these people are not going to be allowed to speak, and she went and told Lisa Brown and Barb Byram, they started tweeting, and that was it. It went mm -hmm. viral, and it was all over the place. So, well, that well, is, oh, and, 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 and Bill's absolutely right. I mean, and, and not just, and, and viral within less than an hour. Mm -hmm. That I, I was there on the floor, and there were people who had contacts in other states um, where radio stations and TV stations were calling them up saying, hey, can you come on Mr. this Stamis afternoon and talk about this? Mr. Stamis said I didn't anticipate this. No, you know what? really. You violated the first rule of politics. Yeah. The, if you're going to do something, you always think, what is the worst thing that can happen if right. I do this? Apparently, nobody wow. asked that question. Well, you, you know, know what? No, well, this, well, just a second here. Just a second, Rick. I mean, here's the issue. I mean, this has gone on in the House floor for so long where they've taken opportunities to ration speaking, tell people they couldn't speak. This happened to Harvey Santana. This happened to John Svitolsky right. already yeah. this, se this session. Yeah. You know, they've taken it upon themselves that we can ration when people speak, how long they speak, and what they speak on. And this has been an embedded culture for at least 10 years. And so 
I don't think they thought this was a big deal. This was business as usual. Right. You know but what? There was I a wonder whole... if a more seasoned leadership team. Remember, these people are in what? You know, they, they've been running the show for a year and a They're half. Neophytes. They're in their third <laughs> year of serving, and I just wonder. You know, well, this could be. You know, you talk about the effects of turmoil. Well, Sister Alan Miller understand. is not a neophyte. It, it, yeah. Was she in the room when the decision was made? You have to look at the fact that this there was a lot of built-up frustration over this whole process. So these suddenly this huge package of anti-abortion bills showed up in committee, kind of just all of a sudden. Um, you know, they allowed you know people that were in favor of the package to speak. They allowed just a few opponents, all men, to speak. You had a room full of angry women who were not allowed to talk about the, the this committee. The committee chair is, is a woman. Well, I'm just saying, okay, but <laughs> opponents who were not allowed, female opponents who were not allowed to speak, and then the next thing it's up on the floor. And so people, you know, the Democrats weren't going to stop this. They understood that. But when you sit there and you suddenly then say, you know, this was a sensitive issue where you had a woman who was silenced for talking against some legislation that a lot of women feel is infringing on their abilities to control their own body. That's what touches this off. It's not saying the word vagina on the floor. It's a fact they underestimated the fact mm -hmm. that they looked like they were muzzling women from discussing mm -hmm. a topic that is very important to a and lot of women. And nobody figured that out in and advance. Get, I mean, one of the things that was sort of interesting, I was talking to uh, Diane Byram, who was the House Democratic leader a few years ago, and she said what really astonished her about this was they had won on, 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 on the policy they had won. They had the votes, they passed the legislation, and they couldn't just take their victory that um, that, that, that this is something that, that the Republicans did to winners. themselves. They were sore winners. Sore winners. Well, look, going back to just what Kyle and Rick have been saying, a lot of this conduct has been going on for a long time by both parties when they're in the majority. In this particular case, it was grossly mishandled by the majority. And remember, it's part of the frustration of being in the minority, like Representative Kavanaugh mentioned last week when he said, you know, we think it's outrageous that they will not allow a, a vote on a two-thirds immediate effect majority, and they are just <coughs> gaveling these bills through, and they've contested it in court. This is actually part and parcel of the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're now muzzling people. They're deciding how much they can speak, when they can speak, whether they can speak at all. They're saying, mm -hmm. you want to have a vote on uh, immediate effect? Forget it. Does the we typical say no. voter at home give a hoot? Well, they, they do, have, they they do to the extent do. that they don't like to see the majority running roughshod over right, so the minority. So here's the question on the but table. Wait a minute. What they have that's very they evenly have, divided. Yeah. Is now the Democrats have, because of the, of the House Republicans, this is a gift, an in-kind contribution to Democratic Party fundraising and get out the vote. The question. That this has put the House Democrats and a whole and, and Lisa Brown's county uh, uh, county clerk race on the radar of people who write big checks on both I, coasts. I, and so other here states. is the question: Does this influence control of the House in the November elections, Ms. Hoffman? I don't know. That's a big hurdle. I mean, they may Democrats may pick up another couple seats because of this, but they have you know there's 11 seat difference, and it's a lot. It's a big hurdle to get control. Mr. Ballinger, probably not. But if the Republicans keep it up, it might. <laughs> Um, no, I don't think it uh, changes control of the House. It changes fundraising and get out the vote. No, I mean, the people who have filed have already filed, and you're not going to change the candidates. I agree. Okay, it, uh, but it will be, an, we're in day eight. Uh, it, it gets a couple more days. <laughs> I just yeah. got 10 well, minutes here. Hey, it was in the, well, it was on the view. Whatever that's week. worth. Yeah. Oh, right. It was everywhere. It was on the view, baby. Right. Ballot proposals. Time. Ballot proposals. Got a bunch. Uh, Billy, uh, which one is the most contentious one, do you think? The most contentious yeah. out of the ones that look like that they're going like to be on the ballot for sure. Yeah, I'll help you. It's the collective bargaining one. Well, oh, that's job, that's what Thank I you, would Matt. think. Yeah. But but you know, Emer the bridge manager is mm. huge. Though, no, too. this is business and labor. The lines are drawn. I, the money's actually, being raised. I tend to agree with that. Business versus yes. labor. Yeah, well, but you okay. could you could argue the collective bargaining also includes PA four though too. Absolutely. I mean, you, if you pass collective bargaining, PA four kind of repeals. It's a five. Yeah, but I know, but but PA four is kind of an offshoot of collective. Well, bargaining. This thing is like the big semi rolling the down the freeway. That's <laughs> the point, that now the business interests are contending in court that the collective bargaining language goes way too far. 
and it's like rim it's too gin. sweeping, too rim gin. <laughs> too many issues changed. Too many in the issues. Two thousand eight, the effort. And they've to asked put Ruth Johnson, the, the secretary. I want to see this board of yeah. canvassers meeting, recommending that she tell the board not to certify not this to when certify. the courts have said they have to. Well, even if they do, they'll take it to court. Yeah. And they'll try mm -hmm. and get the same decision they got four years ago. You remember Mike Cavanaugh, Democratic justice, actually agreed with the Republican majority, saying rim gin should not be on the ballot. Casinos. That's what they want to do. With the that. one casino proposal is going to be on the ballot, it looks like. It looks like that, yes. With eight new casinos, theoretically. You mean the other mm -hmm. won't? Uh, the Billy Sims thing, I'm told, is in trouble, but never underestimate a former running back for the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> he scored a lot of touchdowns well, I in think the past. we can underestimate <laughs> yeah, I think we, And I think we probably should. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that one isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, but the other one will. Yeah, and the so, other one will. And so how does that play with the electorate? We've got I, 25 casinos now. This theoretically could bump the number to I think 33. It's a negative. I'm listening yeah. to John Ingler. I don't want to turn Michigan into the Midwest Las Vegas. I think Vegas. it's a negative. I mean, look, the last time we had a proposal for more casino gambling, 2004, look what happened. So, I mean, I just don't think so. Yeah, you know, the problem the, uh, is, the, one of the big problems, I think, is the, the no vote is going to be funded very well by the Chippewa Indians, by Motor City, by MGM. They're going to come in full force against this thing. I, I just don't see who's going to have the money to even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them on that. And, 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 and they have a, a, a simple message, which is that the Michigan Constitution should not be amended to create a business opportunity. No, I think the but simple message is we've got enough gambling. <laughs> <laughs> but this is being sold as well, jobs. Cool. Will not the people in those eight cities, which includes the township of DeWitt, Detroit, Grand Rapids, won't these folks say, man, a casino, this is jobs, this is money? Well, they might, but this is not a, there, but you have a whole lot of people in the state who don't think we should have casinos in the first place, so there's an automatic no well, look vote at, look there. At, I well, mean, wait a know, second, right, right we created Lansing, casinos, they voted been... for casinos. <laughs> Well, we, we, they also three voted in so, Detroit. Yeah, they voted for three, three in Detroit, so it wouldn't be any place else. No, I, I, I think this is a state that, you know, there's a lot of people that think casino gambling is not a good thing. They well, you know, that, that, that reasons, there's talk so. of, of a casino right here in Lansing, and the community is pretty divided about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then just go to West Michigan. They're still fighting the gun like casino <laughs> there in West Michigan. They actually had a little victory in court this week. I mean, West Michigan, I think Kathy's right in particular, is going to be a very firm no yes. against that. And now you've got to find that section of the state where you've got a firm yes. You ain't going to get it from Detroit. They don't want to see the competition of their casinos. Where's the yes votes coming The from? bad news on the petition drive the post-hippie generation did not get their legalized marijuana thing on the ballot. It looks like it won't, and they're they probably got 40,000 signatures. Yeah, there are about a dozen proposals. And half of those didn't know what they were signing. Floating around, a dozen. Yeah. And, and right now, it looks like there are only four that are probably going to be on the ballot, assuming collective bargaining makes <coughs> it, plus emergency management. Bridge will be on. Yeah. Mm. yeah How does that one go? And does that hurt the governor? I don't know. I can't really tell what's, you know, what, th there's so many legal things involved on, you know, is the agreement, you know, well, you know the bomb interesting proof thing about that the bridge, this doesn't yeah. make any difference. I mean, who knows, you know? Well, well the, the governor has been hurt by the bridge because there's been this wave of advertising funded by the Ambassador Bridge Company, but there's never been a, a, a well-funded, coordinated answer back. And there won't and, be. And this would, and, and well, if this gets on the ballot, it, it would require something. Do you think he will dig into his uh, slush fund and run commercials. Hi, I'm Rick Snyder. I want to build you a bridge. No, but someone would have to be going back and, and, and making the argument for the bridge why it's a good you idea. Know now, now, we should we should point out that the governor thinks that, that he's found a way to bypass all of this. I um, understand. That in, the, in the ad air war, Maroon has such a lead that nobody can cut into that. They have, they have inoculated the state to believe this governor is a bad guy for doing this bridge. Mm -hmm. And you don't have enough money to overcome that. He's been on the air for how many months? Well, well. And you, that's, you know, that's discounting the whole fact that there's some tea partiers out there who have a whole nother take on why this is all wrong and illegal. <laughs> right. and, exactly. You know, so, I mean, there's, yeah. I, I would disagree with the sense. I do think that they can cut into mm -hmm. the air war lead. I mean, money can buy a lot of things. Now, the question is, is who's going to pony it up? I don't know if Rick Snyder's got it in his own slush fund. I mean, th this isn't like Granholm, Granholm, who was like a fundraising machine who had money, uh, an enormous pack. I mean, Snyder's pack's really very small in comparison to what Granholm had or even Mike Cox and Where's had. all the chambers of commerce? They said that, you know, they well, make a press release. All, why don't they right? pony up some well, money? Well, that's, that's where they got to go. Yeah. Well, and that, will that's, they? That's the uh, question. You know, know if you've got a chance of control of the House or fighting the bridge, where yeah. do you think the chamber money's going to go? Mm, well, control the House. 
Yeah, well, and, I would think so. Or ballot, guess, other ballot proposals or the, besides or the, or the, or the bridge. Supreme yeah. Court races. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of On things. On the long line of lists, well, this is down near the let, bottom. Let me just mention girls. one thing. Please. Outside money, pack money, super PAC money from outside the state. Look at uh, Americans for Prosperity who fought the, the, bridge, the bridge with yeah. Maroon. If the business interests, the chambers in the state can get together with the national super PACs and everything else, which I'll bet you they are, and they can decide, we have got so many proposals on the ballot and we need so much money, we've got to have outside help. If they can get that outside help for the mm. proposals they care about, their position, well, what about the agenda, agenda, no, but they're just then they can do it because they can't. Fund it all what about themselves. organized labor? Gonna, can't the governor run a blanket Ricky, vote no campaign on Can't everything. the governor go to organized labor and say, "Look at guys, ten thousand jobs." Well, get to, your check to turn out. your question around. If you're organized labor, which one do you care most about? Exactly, the that's it. That is a central problem yeah, right. on this yeah, issue. Yeah. Okay, exactly. There's only so much money. Everybody yeah. thinks there's a bottomless pit out there, all right. but I never for the here. people who right. have to pay the. A bills. very quiet and sedate show. Thank yeah, you all very much. Appreciate that. Actually, that's very nice. Not. You like my tie, too. <laughs> I know you like no, my tie. No, that's what I was referring to. Wear one next, yeah. We're on I'll get Facebook, next we're on too. YouTube. Where did I lose control? <laughs> I never had it. We're on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Next week, a great show. Pollsters, four of them, will be right here. See you then. I'm Tim Skubik. Production of Off the Record is made possible in part by a grant from Truscott Rossman, Michigan's only bipartisan strategic communications firm serving statewide, national, and international clients from their offices in Lansing, Detroit, and Grand Rapids. TrescottRossman.com By the Michigan Food and Beverage Association, in conjunction with the Michigan Business and Professional Association, working together for its members. Membership information on the web at mishbusiness.org. By Hager Fox Heating and Air Conditioning Company, providing comfort to mid-Michigan homes and businesses since 1941. Hager, Fox, and Bryant, for whatever it takes, on the web at hagerfox.com. And by Campaign Finance US LLC, a Michigan company bringing the public online access to local campaign finance reporting. Find your county's filings at campaignfinance.us. Campaign Finance US, creating tools for transparency for Michigan's counties. M Live Media Group, providing real-time Michigan news, sports, business, and entertainment at mlive.com. Tim Skubik blogs about Michigan politics daily at MLive.com. Off the Record can be seen online anytime at video.wkar.org. Episodes on DVD are also available for purchase. Michigan public TV stations have contributed to the production costs of Off the Record with Tim Skubik.